All right, guys, quick apology. Uh, the video audio quality on this episode is going to be a little bit less than uh, subpar for you guys. Um, there were some connection issues both on my end and on his end uh, that made him cut out a little bit. And I got let's keep in mind, he's in Thailand right now. Uh, Mr. Chris Haynes of Shit Troop Supporters say, um, you know, he did absolutely great and I didn't want to stop him on any of the roles he was on. Uh, so there will be some garbled areas. I tried to cut it down as much as possible, uh, but again, to preserve a lot of the content and the, the tail ends of things you, that I was able to catch uh, through the stream. I just didn't want to didn't want to lose all of that uh, and didn't want to just toss this out the window because the, the overall quality ended up being a lot less than what I'm used to. Uh, so I hope you guys do enjoy. Uh, this man has a lot of very important things to say. Uh, and especially on the anti-war front of things. Uh, so keep this in mind. Show this guy some support. Go to Facebook.com and do a search for Shit Troop Supporter Stay and check it out. Uh, so without any further ado, uh, here's your episode with Chris Haynes. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Adam Broad of Liberation Oils Republic High coming to you from the Voluntary Virtues Network here in the office. Yes, yes, I know. It's been two weeks since I put together some content for you guys. I reused content last week because I'm a lazy asshole like that. But apparently you guys loved it. Rob had a good time making it with you guys back in the day. Uh, so, you know, make sure to check out all the previous episodes and don't just watch my show. I know none of you just watch my show. Half of you don't even watch the show. That's not the point. Go and check out some of the other channels that are the other shows that are just great on this network. Randall's show, Robert Kruger's show, Michael Shanklin, whenever he deigns to pop on from time to time now. He's not busy with his white cloud security shenanigans. Uh, so today, we have a very, very important event, a very important gentleman. Uh, I don't know how familiar you guys are on the Facebook spheres of the page Shit Troop Supporters Say. It is one of the most entertaining pages that you'll ever see. I mean, it's right up there with uh, just status things and uh, all the other fun meme-generating uh, channels and, and pages out there. This guy is a powerhouse. This this whole page is a powerhouse. Uh, we are talking with Chris Haynes of Shit Troop Supporters Say. He is the head admin of a whole ragtag clan of anti-military, war-hating motherfuckers who are just so badass that, it, I mean... There's not enough balls in the universe to show how many balls these guys have. I mean, it's just incredible what these guys are able to put out. Uh, so, Chris, welcome to the show, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, sure, sure. Well, I, um, I'm originally from Canada, so uh, I'm not... It's like, and I mean, let's say you've never, uh, never left the country before. No, I, I don't even live there. I live, uh, I lived the past uh, three and a half years in Egypt. Uh, I was doing my my masters in political science there, and um, now I live in Thailand. <laughs> You're crazy. <laughs> Which I mean, it's this is one of those things that I found so interesting with with the page that you run uh, is it's so U.S. focused. Yet you're a Canadian in Thailand studying Egypt history. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> How does this work? Um. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been studying things like war and imperialism for for years now, you know, and that's kind of what my thesis is based on. And so it's just it's just something that that really interests me. And you can see, I mean, the reason it's focused on the U.S. is because the U.S. is the hegemon now. It's the the empire, or at least it's the um, the most important part of the empire, you know. So, I mean, that's where the focus will be. If you know, if it ever, um, if it collapses and China becomes an empire, then I'm going to criticize China too. Right. It's one of those wonderfully you can go ahead and criticize anything that happens to have a gun attached to it if it's an asshole. Uh, so it's never necessarily a bad thing. Um, why don't we dig a little bit into your background a little bit. Um, what brought you to this this anti-war, uh, anti-troop, anti-imperialist uh, mindset? Uh, mm -hmm. Did you have neocon upbringing like I had? Uh, did you have some kind of transformation with Ron Paul? Are you an anarchist right now? 
where do you fall in the whole spectrum of asshole okay. to good guy? <laughs> okay, yeah, it's it's been kind of a long journey because, um, I mean, my parents, they're not not neocons at all. They're not really, they're not pr particularly political, politically minded, and certainly I wasn't at all until I went to university when I was like, let's say, let's say when I was about nineteen. Um, and I started studying political science one or two years after that, and that's the first time I ever even had an opinion on anything. And, you know, when you study, you know, pretty much everybody who studies political science, you're studying mainstream political science, so you're a statist. Like, there's not, there's no, there's no anarchist option. You know what I mean? They don't say, like, these are various perspectives on the state. They say, like, you know, they say things like, um, of course, we know democracy is the best system. Um, let's look at like ways you can improve it and stuff like that. And that was basically what we did for for five years, you know, or for four years. So um, after that, uh, after I graduated, I was still I was still interested in the subject. So I spent a few years like reading stuff. Like I I, I really don't remember when I first read Reason when I went to Reason.com for the first time, but. It must have been pretty soon after I graduated because I started kind of going in that kind of minarchist direction, you know, not fully understanding um, why, you know, the, the, like the benefits of freedom and that kind of thing, but, you know, kind of slowly going in that direction, starting to see the state for what it was. And it was funny. It, it was really um, – somebody wrote – uh, I was on this Facebook page for, for just for libertarians, for people who call themselves libertarian, and somebody wrote there, um, you guys should really check out anarcho-capitalism. That's kind of like... If you... That's true. Uh, um, oh, there we go. Well, All right. I don't think I so am anymore. I don't know. Say I'm um, I myself like anarchist, which of course is is kind of almost like an oxymoron. But I think I am because I kind of I kind of like all of the schools that that like that really believe in freedom, you know, and uh, and and of course sometimes you know like ANCAPs will say yeah, but but what about this? And then you know the other you know like left libertarians and stuff will say yeah, but what about this? And so you know so I'm kind of in the middle, and like a lot of people on either side hate me for it, but like that's too bad for them. You know? um, right, but and it's, it's been a long time to reach this stage, you know. Right, and that's one of the interesting things I found, at least you know in my situation. I've come in just in the last two and a half years from full-blown constitutionalist, you know, we need the state, rah, rah, let's kill some brown people, uh, <laughs> all the way to, you know, fuck the state, we don't need government for a goddamn thing, uh, and these troop-worshipping, uh, boot-licking, costume-wearing fuckers are just the worst of the worst. Uh, um, part of the problem, yeah. Right, and that's... This is where I've, I've found things so interesting with you and, and your page is your focus on these costume-wearing bastards. Why is it that uh, you chose to go this route as opposed to, say, an economics route, which I started with, or you know going a social justice route, or gaming, or any number of these <laughs> other things that libertarians or anarchists tend to latch on to, but you went for the biggest, baddest, hardest thing to fight with. <laughs> um, I guess so. I mean, the thing is, I, I actually started a page that you, I, I haven't even told you, you might know about the, the page The Rule of Freedom. And I started that page, um, I don't know, three or four years ago. And, uh, and I wrote a book by the same name, The Rule of Freedom. And, uh, and so I've been doing that for a while. Um, but that was kind of, that's kind of a very uh, broad kind of thing about freedom, you know, from an anarchist perspective, but it's a very broad thing. 
Um, what I wanted to do, actually, okay, so maybe I could tell you a story. I have some idea of how this, how this, uh, the trajectory of this this page. I, there were a few people um, that weren't necessarily libertarians or anarchists, but just people who were who were trolling the, the 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 Facebook pages like support the troops, support our troops, support American troops, and there's so many of these pages. You know, I mean, we we share stuff from that all the time. Um, and they were they were trolling them, saying stuff like, "Yeah, you know, why would you support these guys when they're not defending your freedom? They're not, you know, this is just something you guys say. You're just mouthing these slogans." And I looked at them, and I was like, "These are really good arguments," and they're, and yet the, these these troop supporters, these these support my troops people, they keep coming out with the same the same things all over and over again. You know, they keep just generating the same lines and they're not listening to these people who have real arguments and I realized that we we could make a whole page around this like exposing the nonsense that these people are talking about and um, and and like if if you can do that like properly in in the right way and I don't know if I'm doing it in the right way but if if, uh, if you can do it in the right way then you can you can bring down this house of cards you know Right, and this kind of brings up another question I had: is how did the growth exactly happen? I mean, did it was it a flash pan? You know, you got picked up by one or two big guys, you know, in the movement who ended up just trajectorying you into just the outer space limits of just epicness, uh, which okay. has become the following you guys have now. Or has it been taking years and months to build it up slowly and slowly and slowly uh, while dealing with all the silly shenanigans in between? We started it um, in spring of this year, I think it was. Yeah. Wow. Um, it wasn't. It hasn't been too long. Yeah. So it's it's partly some of the some of the really cool uh, pages, you know, like the art of not being governed and stuff like that. Like um, they, you know, definitely they've helped a lot. But it's also there's other things, you know. Um, I think it's. I think it's got as much to do with the people on the page who are just sharing like the memes and the and um, what's the word the statuses and stuff that they agree with seems to be right and gradual they they tend to be building slowly right and it's you know I just see the the likes just jump up and jump up every single week every single day even sometimes you know you're getting ten twenty thirty extra people who are jumping on the bandwagon and mm -hmm. You know, this kind of brings into question some of your uh, your methods because I know some people are getting pissed off at you. And you know, initially when I first found the page, I was like, "My God, <laughs> these guys are slaying these people so <laughs> hardcore." I mean, not nearly as hard as you know the people who are in the you know, manning the drones, bombing the weddings, uh, but. Yeah. But damn, things are just really, really harsh in your face and just mm -hmm. so rough around the edges. It's not some, you know, Hans Hermann Hoppe, you know, super psycho, like, academic arguments as to why the, the state is illegitimate and why the military is even more illegitimate and private security, blah, blah, blah. All that boring bullshit. It, you're hitting right at the heartstrings. You're really getting into people's rustling their jimmies. You know, like why... Why do you go that route as opposed to the more logical academic approach? Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, here's the thing. I, I find there's there's two things that you could do, and, and those are the two that you've mentioned. You know, you can take the more conciliatory, uh, conciliatory role uh, of saying, like, have you considered thinking about it from this perspective? And then there's the other side, which is not, I mean, I don't see my 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 point as to hit uh, a troop supporter in the face and expect them to change their mind. That's not really how I see myself. Because I'm the kind of guy. I, um, we're we're not really the kind of people who um like who who have these kind of subtle arguments and stuff. We we our our role is more to preach to the choir. You know, like now a lot of people would say, "Oh, well, why would you preach to the choir? That's pointless." But it's not pointless. The preacher does it every Sunday. You know, it's it's a I, I would consider it a very important thing, a necessary thing. 
because those are the people who are going out and and like to continue the metaphor at least they're the ones converting people right um, it's not it's not the preacher so the the way I see it I want to be the one who's very educated and informed on this subject and and that's and you can see like from the stuff on the page it's not just like look at this dumb thing that these troop supporters are saying it's things like you know the causes of war the effects of war the the long term effects things from um, things from academic sources and and so on you know and things from from journalists who are uh, who have who've seen this kind of thing um, I, you know I want to be the really educated one that, that, that shows all the other people who are interested in this subject, but just don't, you know, they're not going to spend hours and hours reading all the books that I've read, you know. Um, if I can bring that to them and say, check this out, then they're going to be the ones who are informed, and they're going to be able to tell, you know, their friends and so on. And those are the people who are going to their minds, you know. And it's already, and, but, but that said, even that, um, a lot of people have come to the page, well, I shouldn't say a lot, a few people have come to the page and said, you know what, I used to think you guys were idiots or you're crazy, but now I agree with you. So so th this approach does seem to, you know, it seems to work a little at least. <laughs> right, and you know, I, I think it's interesting you're using it to preach to the choir as opposed to you know, outreach, because obviously shit trip supporters say is something that will just rile up anybody who's not a, of our camp. Uh, but okay. using it to kind of bring out some of the better arguments to us so we can bring it forward, I think that's a, a very uh, yeah. far-reaching goal. It's a, a, a long-visioned idea, uh, which is something we've seen the Mises Institute do. Bitcoins are doing that now. Uh, you know, the Tom Woods show with Liberty Classroom, even Stefan Molyneux's productions and everything that he does is going for that future where we're all thinking about these arguments, and I, I just think that's brilliant. Uh, and the fact that you can give me a laugh li literally every single day, at least four times a day, while I'm scrolling through, you know, whether I'm on my overnight shifts, sitting on the toilet, or, you know, at my little computer command desk here uh, playing cool. Minecraft, I'll pop open my phone and I'll say, oh, hey, look. Other post. <laughs> Fucking awesome. Uh, so, all right, this brings us to the fun part of the day where I have to ask, what is the most outrageous threat you've ever received? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we do get some some pretty funny threats. I mean, it seems to be the thing that, that troop supporters' um, minds work hardest at is threatening people, you know. <laughs> like, they come up with some pretty creative stuff. I don't know off the top of my head what uh, would be the best one. Um, it does get pretty funny, though, because, you know, what they say, they'll say, like, you know, we want to protect, you know, again, they're assuming that I'm an American, right? So they'll say, like, uh, or, or wh whichever admin, not, not all of them are Americans. Um, they'll, they'll say something like, um, we, we protect Americans. We believe in freedom. And then they'll tell you that, you know, not only you should shut up, but that I'll, I'll beat you up or I'll kill you or you're, you're too scared to show your face because you know we're going to kick your ass. And I'm like, are, are you sure you believe in freedom? <laughs> freedom is this? Um, right. So I mean, it, it just seems like the freedom for them to kick anybody's ass who doesn't agree with them and... Uh, I don't think that ever counts as freedom, as far as anything that I've read, even in amongst the status literature. I mean, I don't know. I could just be thinking different. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's. But you know, they're all they're all idle threats. So it's like it's like whatever. I I find it much more interesting when we can show, um, like something we posted. I think it was yesterday. Um, Someone posted something of like um, these guys driving around on on a, like a motorbike with like an upside down American flag, and there were a couple of Marines that like ran over and tried to kick their asses and really did like like they were gonna they were gonna beat them up, you know. And so I mean, again, like when it's on Facebook, like it's just an idle threat. But when you see it like in real life, these are the people because of all this support the troops nonsense. 
Right, and you know, this is one of those funny things that I've I've run into even just as early as last year, and this was back before I was so in people's faces about being kind of anti-troop. Uh, I was doing my usual 9/11 post, you know, saying, you know, rip the all the victims and all that, and you know, don't forget that we're still looking for answers for the families who have questions still, and. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a tragedy what's going on over in the Middle East with this undeclared, unconstitutional, illegal war. Uh, and uh, one of my former high school friends, his name is Austin Quiggle. And yes, Austin, I'm calling you out. I know you have seen my Facebook posts. I know you still watch them occasionally. I've deleted okay. a lot of your posts on them because you're a motherfucking asshole who is nothing but a welfare fucking whore. Yes, bring it on. Try me. I've saved all of your posts, so if you do kick my ass, I can get you on pre premeditated assault. So, fuck you, Austin. Yeah, I'm calling you out. This guy, he was like, oh, I'm going to come and beat your motherfucking fat ass, and, you know, you're not supporting me, and I've seen people die, and I'm like, well, I you've seen people die because you're in a profession that's around death. Not yeah. my fault. Your stupid fucking decision. You're the one that decided to go overseas. You know, maybe he didn't make the... Of course, he didn't make the decision to go overseas. That's his commanders. But he followed along with it. He chose to get yeah. into a, a profession where not only is he leeching off of my hard-earned tax dollars, which, granted, I don't work very hard. I work in a fucking hotel. He's doing a lot more labor than I am. I will give him that credit. He's in incredible shape. Good for you. You can run a marathon. You can carry 50 pounds of gear with a gun and kill, you know, 10-year-old brown kids. Good for you. You're a fucking moral actor. That's great. Yeah, yeah no. I'm actually providing a service. You're killing people. So uh, get out of here with that bullshit. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, no pent-up anger on that. None at all whatsoever. <laughs> Anyways, enough that, of that. That's not in itself. Like, that's not... That doesn't mean anything in itself. Like, they died for a lie, you know? And so right. <clears throat> and we're trying so hard to expose those lies, you know, to show that, like, you know, you're not doing it for your country unless your country means, like, a few really rich people who control the state. Right, and you know that's what people don't tend to understand. They think that the government is us and that we're the government, which I'm assuming you've read a little bit of Rothbard or at least portions of Anatomy of the State, and he said, you know, the state, we are not the state. The government is not us. You know, and even if 70% consented to killing off the other 30%, that's not moral. That is not the epitome of good action just because it was voted to be so, just because a supermajority said so. Uh, so, I mean, I guess the next question for you is... You know, why do you think there's all this mindless nationalism? Why do you think all this bootlicking occurs? Is it because it's so, you know, driven into our skulls in church and in school? Uh, is it does it have to do with the history books? Does it have to do with, uh, you know, the fancy clothing that these people get to wear? You know, or is it something a little bit more fundamental and tribal? I mean, I don't know. What do you think? Sorry, I I missed that. You're gonna have to repeat it. Yeah, uh, so the the overall question is, you know, why is the nationalism and the, the bootlicking uh, so predominant? Where does it originate? Is it because of schools and churches, uh, or is it because of the fancy outfits or the, the the parades that happen every day for these people? Why is it so big? Yeah, that's, it's a really, it's a complex issue. And, and you know, again, this is something we really try to break down to people. Um, because it's not just from one place, you know, like, it would be easy for us to say something like, well, it's the government that's doing it all, but it's not really, you know, that's just kind of one angle of it. Um, let me, let me quote you something from Andrew Bass of it. I, I have no idea. <laughs> I feel like I should know the name. Hello? Uh, yeah, he looks at most of your questions there. Um, or, or let's say that would mostly answer your question, called the New American Militarism. 
Uh, I'm going to read from uh, page one here. Today, as never before in their history, Americans are enthralled with military power. The global military supremacy that the United States presently enjoys and is bent on perpetuating has become central to our national identity. More than America's matchless material abundance or even the effusions of its pop culture, the nation's arsenal of high-tech weapons at arsenal have come to signify who we are and what we Now, he, uh, he talks a lot in this book about... Uh, you know where you know how how it's uh, uh, how it's become that way. He starts from um, he kind of starts from the end of the Vietnam War because that's what he knows most about because he was in Vietnam again. Um, but he he kind of looks at like how roughly from the beginning of the of uh, Reagan's time or even just a bit before that you had this kind of um, resurgence. After the the um, the kind of the shame of the end of Vietnam, there was this kind of resurgence of militarism, and it came from a few um, from what we at least now call the neoconservatives. I think I think they were neoconservatives back then, or at least they were um, early neoconservatives, let's say. Um, but it also came from things like um, the the kind of the evangelical Christians of. Uh, of the United States, which is like something like a hundred million people, you know. So there was there was, there's a big uh, thing from there as well, um, and and of course the government has just been kind of pushing it along because they because they, they like that and and you know the whole military industrial complex and, and I mean w which in itself is even that is almost um, not accurate because it's so much more than just the military industrial complex because. Um, you know, like Hollywood is in it, academia is part of it, like it's, it's all these things, you know. Um, they're, they're, they form this whole complex around, um, around why the United States is the so-called indispensable nation, why it uh, has this duty to spread, you know, um, democracy and so-called free markets, you know, of course it's not free markets, but um, that's what they're called, you know, the like neoliberalism. Basically, right? Um, why it has a duty to do that? Why it's been right? You know, a lot of it's got to do with like uh, kind of whitewashing history, whitewashing the history of U.S. foreign policy or of the United States as a whole. You know, um, and nowadays, of course, it's become um, a, a, almost a bottom-up thing. It's not just um, coming from the top down, from you know, academics or the state or anything. It's it's so much about um, the people on the bottom, and that's why, you know, there's all these Facebook pages, all these support the troops Facebook pages, and so on, because they've taken it into their own hands. Normal people, they say, well, yeah, we should support the troops, and uh, you know, because they're fighting for our freedom. You know, it's almost as if it was self-evident that they're doing that. You know, and like um, that uh, they're keeping us safe. That that these wars, you know, and the the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and and um, and, and Libya and stuff. Of course, that's in our interest, you know. And uh, and 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 then and you've got that side, and you've also so so the people who say that the wars are okay, but you've also got the people who say that you know we don't particularly like war, but we support the troops. You know, we we uh, we support, and basically they support them unconditionally, right? Um, so no matter what they do, there's always an excuse for it. There's a reason why it had to be that way, you know. And so, um, and so, and so, there's that, you know. And it's 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 everywhere in American culture. You know, it's every like games and so on. Um, I, I remember when I was in Egypt, and I never watch WWE. In fact, I don't really watch any sports either. Um, but I saw. Um, when I was in Egypt, I saw like this thing on on a TV that was on that was like WWE's um, week of salute to the troops or something, and I was like, what? Even these guys are doing it. Everybody's doing it. They're all pandering. Um, it, it's as if like like a lot of you know a lot of the people will say like if you don't you know support the troops um, it, that you know, there's something wrong with you. But in this, in a lot of cases, it's almost as if 
if you don't go out of your way to support the troops, then there's something wrong with you. You know, it's, it's insane. And so you know, you don't even need it to be promoted from newspapers and stuff anymore because it's coming from the bottom up. Right, and that's you know how it got that far so fast. I mean, just in 200 years, and you know, maybe I'm kind of taking a short view here. Perhaps this militarist idea has been since the beginning of time when, you know, whenever first armies started happening. Maybe it's been so ingrained in us for so long. I don't know. I mean, I'd, I know a little bit of history, but not enough to be dangerous. One thing I've just been hung up on the, this entire time, uh, you, you mentioned how people call America the indispensable nation. And that kind of makes me giggle in that there's uh, we're the indispensable nation, yet we are the most disposable with our troops, that these men and these women who are out there fighting for our freedom, which is nothing but lies, they're allowed to be just tossed to the side, be statistics, yeah. be suicide rape statistics, and just be turned into cannon fodder for the elites. <laughs> and indispensable? I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, I think I think it was. Um, uh, what's it? I think it was Madeleine Albright, you know, Bill Clinton's Secretary of State, that that originally said um, the indispensable nation. But I mean. I read I read in an article about Hillary Clinton that she said it in her uh, latest memoir or, or something like that. And so so they're all saying it, you know. And the more more, more people on the bottom are going to start saying it and start thinking it too, you know. And um, but but that's one of those things that um, to a lot of I think to a lot of Americans, even when Albright said it, it it was kind of it was self evident to them, you know. Um, of course we are, because, for example, we, communism, we led, you know, we brought down the USSR, you know, which is not really accurate, but that's what people believe, you know, and we, we were the ones who ended Nazism, and we uh, did this and did that, and, and so on, you know. Um, and, and so, um, okay, so, so you were talking about history, so it's pretty easy to go back for almost to the dawn of civilization and see war being justified by the elites who are, who are carrying it out as either necessary to protect ourselves or good because we're spreading civilization and value, you know, these good values, whatever our values are. You know, whatever, every, every culture at different times says, like, these are our values and this is why they're universal and they have to be spread. Um, and and so you know Americans nowadays or or British people too and and um, and and some other groups you know they they kind of just assume that their values are universal and that they are kind of the first people in history ever to um, to be waging war selflessly you know oh we're not doing it for us we're doing it you know um, for for the security of the world or freedom of the world. We want to spread these universal values of democracy and uh, neoliberalism and stuff like that. Um, it's it's really it, it's people with very little understanding of history won't you know they won't realize that. But if you if you take a long enough view, you can see that history really is repeating itself. Just it's just that now we have um, Facebook, so you. You know, the the current empire can can spread its its views through fame bottom um, and and get legitimacy that way. Right, and you know, this is the beauty of the internet and the time we live in now is we're able to combat that just as hard and if not more successfully. Yeah. I mean, because the state's been around for so long, they've been suppressing any kind of dissent. Uh, you know, and even you know, prince of anti-war anythings, even back in World War II, was almost a treasonable offense, as far as I can recall from my history books. And obviously all, all the wonderful yeah. yellow slanty-eyed Japs were uh, rounded up and yeah. put away in camps because they happened to have slanty eyes and a slight yellow tint to them. Uh, and that's that's just the, the sick mentality of the state. Uh, but we're slowly winning, and we're slowly fighting that back and beating it back. Syria really hasn't happened. 
we never we haven't really gotten involved there as much as we thought we would have, and that's what we're finding with future potential occupations. So mm-hmm. pages like yours are winning. Antiwar.com are is winning this fight. Uh, how do we continue to push this? Do we continue with, uh, you know, some hard hitting, you know, let's focus on emotions type stuff? Uh, do we bring up the the more horrors of war? Should we continue to publish? Uh, you know these children with half their guts hanging out. Uh, how do we how do we move forward? How do we make more people anti-war? Did you get any of that? Nation. Oh, sorry. You know, there's there's always got to wait because I play playing on like I. I can talk, yeah. talk about like my face. I tend to kind of go, yeah, doing logic route, but but it's only one way, but not necessarily, you know. So necessarily, you know. Right. So right. so. so um, because people, because emotion can be really are going to like be powerful too. I like that photo. Say yes. Because he is a speech, you know, what a wonderful victim. Probable victims of of like imperialism, of U.S. imperialism or whoever you know, whoever's wars, then it, and 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 explain why these things are happening. Then I think that's that's a good way to go. You know, um, some people, you know, for some people, logic appeals more, but it doesn't it seems to be much less so. Um, and 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 I mean, what I'm doing is mostly just on Facebook, like. The, there's there's so many other things that you could do. Um, I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of things like protests because they don't seem to to be super effective. You know, like at least at least the nonviolent protests. The violent protests are probably more effective than the nonviolent ones. Although I'm not really sure, and uh, that's that's for another discussion. You know, a different time. But it's still it's the kind of thing that that you you could do. You know, like, and, and I know, like, a lot of ANCAPs will, will ridicule, like, the Occupy protesters, for example. But I think that's another thing that um, had potential, at least. It had some potential. It, it got, like, you know, like, a lot um, what was wrong with it. But at the same time, I think there was, there was the potential. And so that's just another one of these things that could happen. You know, and I mean, and and I and I am an anarchist, but at the same time, sometimes I I think maybe um, even things like you know writing to your congressman and stuff. Like sometimes I wonder, like even that, it's, it's hard to tell. It's hard. Like I'm 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 against it in principle because of course it's like it's legitimizing these people. You know, I don't want to legitimize the state in any way. But on the other hand, if it if it works some possible that he could come into power and, and like actually change something, change a little, you know? If he just like didn't go to war when some other guy would have gone to war, then I mean that's something, you know what I mean? So even that, the, the way I see it, 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 this kind of thing will require a diversity of tactics, not just not just kind of not just one thing, not my idea, but our ideas. You know? Right, and th- you know, you, you bring up the whole argument that uh, Murray Rothbard and Tom Woods bring up all the time uh, is that yes, voting for candidates, especially if they have a D or an R next to their name, pretty yeah. sure it's going to be a lock, stock, and barrel bad fucking idea. But if in your local region uh, you have a vote to slow down taxes or to you know eliminate a tax or to stop a tax. You, do. you 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 preserve yourself, or yeah. to legalize pot, or to you know vote against this war measure, or or this that or the other thing, things that you can actually affect change in. 
I don't see anything wrong with that. Anything we do for the cause of liberty, as Rothbard would say, uh, you know, do it. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to be a sweeping, we press one red fucking button, the state just goes... Yeah, no, that's, yeah. that's, that's not going right. to happen. They yeah. they incrementalized and slowly turned on the, the heat to that pot of boiling water with us, the frogs, inside of it. So all we got to do is find a way to dial that back, flip the goddamn pot over, and hop away free. Yeah, yeah. And like I say, it'll require everyone's everyone's ideas and everyone's input. Right. Well, it looks like we're about winding down and we're starting to run out of time here. Um, so, do you have any other sites that you're a part of? Obviously, you, uh, you pushed out uh, the Rule of Freedom, I think you said yeah. earlier. Uh, I yeah, just the... went and liked that page, so I'm going to promote that, put that in the description bar below for you. Uh, obviously, Great. Troop Supporters Stay. Is there anything else out there you want to promote? Any websites? Anything you think is just pivotal? Uh, in Especially just focusing on the troop issue, but just anything in particular. Um, nothing of my own, no. Um, but um, but there are lots of these good. There are lots of good Facebook pages similar similar to ours, you know. So if you just go, I mean, if you just go to shit troop supporters say, and you look at the pages that that it likes, you know, there's lots of other good pages there. So you know, look look for all of them. They all make good points. Yeah, very good. We will definitely. Definitely throw a like over to those, and we'll put all those in the description bar below, or as many of them as are applicable in the description bar allows us to. Uh, so this will be Adam Brott with Chris Haynes of Shit Troop Support us today, signing off, saying peace and love and liberty. And uh, if you're wearing a, a suit that happens to have camo on it, if you have a badge on you, you're not any different than anybody else, but you're kind of more of an asshole, especially if you use that gun to say, if you don't like it, then you can go to Somalia. Yeah. Thank you guys. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. <laughs>